Okay, welcome back to Tabletop Republic playthrough of Arkham Horror the Card Game. Tonight we are playing the first expansion that came out after the core set. It is The Curse of the Rougarou. Back in 2016 this was released. Prepare for a bone-chilling hunt through the bayous of New Orleans and Curse of the Rougarou, a unique Arkham Horror card game scenario designed for Arkham Knights 2016. Terror grips New Orleans. Minnie Klein, your contact at Arkham Advertiser, has slipped you a draft of an article over a cup of coffee at Velma's Diner. It would have gone to print had Doyle Jeffries, the lead editor, not scoffed at the concept. I believe his exact words were, I ain't printing the ravings of some voodoo lunatic and passing it off as news, she explained. From the sly grin spreading across her face, you could tell she smelled a story. The headline was sensationalist. Three killings in nine days was enough to spook a town, sure. But you doubt all of New Orleans is gripped by terror, or even knows about the killings. Still, something piqued your interest. Lady Esprit, the voodoo priestess from the article, claimed that a malign curse had been taken root in the bayou. There's something to this, isn't there? I know that look, Minnie said. You weren't sure. If Lady Esprit was right, this Rougarou wouldn't stop killing at three, that's for sure. But curses? Wolf people? How could such things be real? Only one way to find out. You put on your coat and head for the Northside Station. Okay, so I've done all the setup. Um, the Agenda 1A. A creature of the bayou. After arriving in New Orleans the next day, you start your investigation by asking the locals what they know of the recent killings. As you suspected, most know very little of the incidents. You do manage to find several eyewitnesses who give similar descriptions of the creature. Its live, muscular form, lanky arms and wolf-like visage. A promising start. But is there any truth to the rumours about this curse? You'll have to talk to Lady Esprit herself. And Act 1A. Finding Lady Esprit. According to your contact, Lady Esprit is a voodoo priestess who lives deep within the bayou. Most tend to stay clear of her lonely shack. After all, the bayou can be a dangerous place, even if it were not for the recent rash of savage killings. Objective, only investigators at a bayou location may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. Okay, so we've got to find one clue. We've got a doom threshold of five. Let's see what Roland's opening hand is. We are playing as Roland Banks again, fresh off the heels of his uh, traumatic experience of chucking, um, sorry, dealing with the Knight of the Zealot. I won't give any spoilers away, just in case you haven't seen those videos already. And if you haven't seen those videos already, please go and check them out because we like the views, right? It's nice. Okay, so opening hand for Roland, we've got magnifying glass, knife, overpower, no stone unturned, and Roland's 38. Right, I'm not a massive fan of Roland's 38, so I'll probably chuck that back in again. No stone unturned could be good if we don't get anything with this second pull. Magnifying glass is always quite good. Right, so I'm going to chuck those three in. In fact, I'm going to chuck four in. Just keep no stand and turn. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's our opening hand. So, nice quick shuffle. Let's see if we can't entice Dr. Milan, our friend, up to the top of the deck. You know how we love Dr. Milan and Dynamite. Okay, so that's that shuffled. Three actions to start off with. Our first location is the Brackish Waters. The reeking odour of dead fish overwhelms your senses. You can't help but hold your breath as you wade through the repugnant shallows. Okay, while you are at the Brackish Waters, you cannot play assets. Oh dear. Discard two assets, this is an action, discard two assets from your hand or from play, test three evade and wade through the dark waters and retrieve an abandoned fishing net. If you succeed, take control of the set aside fishing net asset. Well, Roland's not wading through anything with a uh, um, evade of two, so I probably won't use that. 
There's no clues here. I can't play assets, so I might as well get out of here, really. First action, then, move to Riverside. Orbidon Park. Forced, when you evade an enemy at Orbidon Park, discard a random card from your hand. Okay, there's a shroud of three and one clue here. Um, right, so, let's play No Stone Unturned for two resources and search the top six cards of our deck for a card. One, two, three, four, five, six. There he is, there he is, Dr. Malayan. Okay, so that's done. Draw it and shuffle your deck. So we've got Dr. Milan in the house. Which is useful. That's my second action. I can't afford to put Dr. Milan into play at the moment, but that's okay. He's around, which is useful. And then third action. I could just investigate three on three, or I could get that clue, or I could get my guard dog out. I'm wondering. I don't really want my guard dog out if I'm going to play Dr. Milan. I don't really want to spend two assets. So my third action, I think I'm going to just gain a resource for now. So that's my three actions done. Then we're on to the enemy phase. Enemy with a hunter keyword move towards the nearest investigator. There are none. Each engage enemy attacks. Likewise, none. Reset all actions. Bam, bam, bam. Draw a card, gain a resource. So we have now Inquiring Mind. Commit to a skill test only if there's a clue at your location. Useful. Draw a resource. Gives me enough for Dr. Milan with some change. One Doom goes on the agenda. So that's one of five and some bad stuff happens. Ripples on the surface. Revelation test three, willpower. Okay, willpower is three. Um, I could put Inquire in mind in which I'm going to because um, I know this Chaos Bag is pretty bad because it's a standalone scenario the Chaos Bag can be punishing. So I'm on plus three, minus three. So that's perfect, that's a pass. That goes away. That goes away without any adverse effect. Good. Then let's play Dr. Milan first off for four. One, two, three, four. And let's investigate using Dr. Milan, and I'll chuck that in just to give me a plus two rather than use it as an event and pay the cost for it. So I am three, four, five, six on three, so I'm plus three again. Nine is three again, oh nice. All right, so that's great. So I discover the clue at my location, and because of Dr. Milan, I gain a resource. So that's my second action. Third action. Um, so the interesting thing about this scenario is that the way that these locations are connected means that you can go from this location to this location without going to this location. So it kind of loops round like that, which is odd. So I will do that. My third action, I'm going to move to this Riverside location, which reveals Forburg Marigny. Hmm. While you're at Forburg Marigny, reduce the cost of each asset you play by one. Oh, we should have known that earlier. Uh, action, resign. We can't catch the beast. You make your way to safety, letting the beast run roam free. Oh, okay, so you've got an option to resign. That's not bad. So that's the end of my actions. Enemy phase doesn't happen because there aren't any. Refresh everything. Draw a card. Machete, love machete. Gain a resource. Doom on the agenda, two of five. Encounter deck gives us spectral mist. Revelation attached to a bayou location, limit one per location. Each skill test performed at the attached location gets plus one difficulty for an action Test two intellect to disrupt the source of the mist. If you succeed, discard spectral mist. Okay. I don't really want to do any skill tests at that, at the moment anyway. 
Okay, then it's back to us. So I will spend my three to get the machete out because I love that weapon. It's a great weapon. Um, I don't want to advance just yet. So what I'll do next is draw a card for my second action. Unexpected Courage, which is good in a fight. And my final action, I will draw another card. Art Student. After Art Student enters play, discover one clue at your location. Okay, me done. Once again, no monsters, so refresh. Draw a card. Oh, the thing that follows. My basic weakness, spawn, the location furthest from you. So both of these are equidistant because remember these loop round. So oh, let's just stick him there. Um, he's a hunter. When the thing that follows would be defeated, instead shuffle it back into your deck. So he just keeps coming back and back and back. That's annoying. Gain a resource. One do on the agenda. Three or five. Encounter phase. Ripples on the surface. Test three. For each point you fail by, take one horror, three willpower. Okay, I have unexpected courage, which I will commit to make me on five willpower. Because I can't take the horror, so I'm only on plus two, which isn't great odds. Not with this chaos bag. Plus two. Minus four, so I fail by two. I have to take two horror. One on Dr. Milan, one on Roland's. Ripples on the surface goes away. Back to us. What to do? The thing that follows is coming. If I go in there, each skill test costs is plus one. So that's not good. That goes away. What can I do? What can I do? All right, so let's gain a resource. No, before I do that, let's draw a card just in case it's emergency cash. Ha, <laughs> call it. All right, then I will spend the emergency cash to get three resources. Second action. And then third action, I'm gonna draw another card, which is scene of the crime. Play as your first action, discover a clue at your location. Not particularly useful at the moment, but maybe later. So then, thing that follow hunts into me, and he will do one damage and one horror on me. So I'll put both of them on me because I don't want to kill Dr. Milan just yet. Then refresh, draw a card, gain a resource, doom four or five, encounter deck says dragged under, revelation test three evade, if you fail dra put dragged under into your threat area. I've got nothing to help me. I am two on three. I need a plus one to pass this. <laughs> Elder sign effect. Plus one for each clue at your location. Well, I own a clue, so that's at my location. I actually passed that test. That is great. So the thing that follows needs its face smacking in. So currently four, five with a machete on three. Uh, let's make it seven on three, so I'm plus four. Plus four, minus one, perfect. So that does two damage on him, one for me, one for the machete. Kills him. Remember, he gets shuffled back into my deck. So back in the goes, the thing that follows may come back to haunt us yet more. Not a nice guy. That goes in there. The skill test was successful because I used overpower. I did well, not because I used overpower, but I used overpower. So I can draw a card. Let's hope it's not the thing that follows again. Dynamite, love dynamite. That might be useful later. Okay, so that was my first action to kill him. Second action. I am going to one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to draw a card, taking me up to seven. Scene of the crime again, and gain a resource, which ends my turn. Then, no monsters in play. Draw a card, taking me up to eight. 
Colt 32, gain a resource, seven resources which is useful. Right, Doom goes on the agenda, which means that the agenda advances. A violent storm rolls in as, you, as your search continues. Black rain clouds conquer the sky and the air is thick with humidity. You recall that all of the recent killings took place late at night under the cover of a dark cloud. A shiver runs up your spine and you cannot help but wonder, what if you are next? Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. If the Rougarou is in play, he's not. If the Rougarou is not in play, after advancing to Agenda 2A, add one, to, one Doom to that agenda. Okay, so we now have one Doom going into the next agenda, which I'm not going to lose any sleep about. So instead of taking away all five, I'll take away four, because we have one Doom on here now. So Agenda 2A reads... Around you the bayou feasts, flesh, rips and jaws snap just beyond the trees and light droplets of rain ripple upon the surface of the water. You can't tell exactly where the sounds are coming from. Perhaps it's the dreadful ambiance of the bayou itself. Right, well I suppose it's time we got to move on, right? Um, before we do that though, the encounter deck will spit. Dragged under at us again. Ugh. So I am again minus one on this now. If that happens again, I've got nothing to help me. So I'm minus one on this test. How <laughs> would you believe it? That's amazing. Love it. Go away, drag under. You will not drag me under. It's forbidden. It's not allowed. Right, so we're moving on. We are going to. Move into brackish waters, where we can't play assets, which we don't care. We're going to spend our clue, which is not an action. Not only investigators at a bayou location may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So I'm going to spend the clue to advance. So that was move in. Finding Lady Esprit's shack is no simple endeavour, but eventually you spot a decrepit shanty through the mists. Lady Esprit greets you as you enter, not at all surprised by your intrusion. She claims that the Rougarou was once a man, cursed by a being known as Shub Niggurath, into a form of a great wolf. She believes she can lift the Rougarou's curse from the bayou, but only if the creature is destroyed. Put the set aside Lady Esprit... Where is Lady Esprit? Here she is. Into play at a bayou location. There she is. Put this put into play each set aside location. So we have some locations put aside here which were randomly chosen. So there's a New Orleans bayou and two New Orleans locations. And then we have Wilderness Bayou. To pop there and two wilderness locations. Put the mess in now. Lady of Spree's crowding us out. We're there. Uh, put the set aside the Rougarou enemy. <clears throat> Here he is. There is the Rougarou. Nice guy. Uh, put the set aside. Rougarou enemy into play in any non bayou location. Right, you got there in New Orleans. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and each encounter card from the Curse of the Rougarou encounter set into the encounter deck. So this is the set aside Curse of the Rougarou encounter set. We'll shuffle that in here. We've dragged under again. Let's give this a bit of a shuffle up. Okay, and then as you leave Lady Esprit's shack, a terrible sickness courses through you and you drop to your knees. The lead investigator puts the set aside Curse of the Rougarou weakness into play into his or her threat area. Right, Roland's the only one here, so he's getting that. So now we're cursed. Right. This could... This could be interesting, right? 
clean up a bit of curse just to help me through the bayous of New Orleans. So the curse of the Rougarou reads, Revelation put curse of the Rougarou into play in your threat area, forced at the end of your turn, if you have not dealt any damage this turn, take one horror. So we need to fight things often, otherwise we're going to slowly go mad. Okay, so that was Act 1A. We're on to Act 2A, hunting the Rougarou. The Rougarou is somewhere within the vast bayou. You must track it down and destroy it, lest the beast's curse consume you as well. Forced, after the Rougarou leaves a location, place one clue from the token bank on that location. Objective, we have to destroy the beast, uh, or there's maybe another way. While an investigator is engaged with the Rougarou, he or she may choose to advance, limit one per phase, once per phase. I don't know, let's, um, I think we're geared up to be quite fighty, so maybe we might just go and try and punch him. I don't know. He's aloof, and he's got retaliate. As an additional cost for an investigator to gauge, engage the Rougarou, the investigators must spend one clue as a group, two clues instead if there are three or four investigators, so one clue. After the Rougarou takes one damage per investigator during a single phase, find the location that is furthest from all investigators, move the Rougarou one location at a time until it enters that location, and it will drop a clue every time it leaves the location. Another interesting thing about this is, you, so the, these locations loop this way, and these ones loop this way, and so do these, but also these three Bayou locations loop that, ooh, Roland, loop, loop that way, but these, these don't loop that way. So that's just another weird anomaly about this, this particular scenario, which is a bit weird getting your head around that, but it's, hopefully I will remember. So he's aloof. You can't fight him unless you engage with him first. I have some dynamite. You know how I like the dynamite, right? So I could move. He's got five health per investigator, so he's got ten health. I'm going to move up into the cursed shores. Black storm clouds loom above you, watching patiently as you trudge through the bayou. Their shapes twist and churn in the night sky, blotting out the stars. Um, as an action, take one damage. You get plus two to your skill value for the next skill test you make this turn. Forced, when you leave Cursed Shores, choose and discard a skill card from your hand. Right, and then third action is spend five. One, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five, and do three damage at a connecting location. So three damage on the Rougarou. Dynamite goes away, it's done its job. That's my third action. So I don't have to put any horror on me because I did some damage this round. The enemy phase, the Rougarou, after the Rougarou takes one damage during a single phase, right, okay, so at the end of the investigator phase, the Rougarou runs away, so he's going to try and get as far away as me as he can. So one, two, three, one, two, dropping clues as he goes, three. Cool. Right, then it is the enemy phase, so nothing happens because he's just a loop, he'll just sit there. Refresh, draw a card, knife, gain a resource, one doom on the agenda, two of six, and pull an encounter card, beast of the bayou, revelation. The Rougarou makes an immediate attack against each investigator at the Rougarou's location and each connecting location. If no attacks are made by this Effect, place one doom on the current agenda. Okay, so that goes there. So now we're quite a ways away from him, but we need to get a clue before we can engage with him, and I don't have any dynamite left, so let's investigate here. Um, we could make sure that happens by spending two, playing working a hunch, which is a fast card, discover one clue at your location. So that's not taking up an action. Then I can move down into the brackish waters. Brackish waters, yeah. 
Um, Lady Esprit is here. She has this effect. Exhaust Lady Esprit and deal one horror to her. Heal two damage or gain two resources. Um, I don't really think I want to do that at the moment. No, I don't want to do that. Then I'm going to move into Orbidon Park. Now remember this guy is aloof, the Rougarou is aloof, so he won't engage me, attack me, any attacks of opportunity or anything. So first action was move down, second action was move in, third action... Um, what would I do, what would I do? I can. I'm going to have to take horror if I don't do any damage on him, but I can't do damage on him because I've got to engage with him first. So, <clears throat> I think I'm just going to gain a resource because I don't really want any cards, so I'll just gain a resource. And that's me done. He does no damage in the, invest in the enemy phase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then refresh. Draw a card taking me up to eight, which is maximum hand size. Seeking answers, investigate if you succeed. Instead of discovering a clue at your location, discover a clue at connecting location. Hmm. That might be useful. Gain a resource, one doom on the agenda. Ooh, Swamp Leech, spawn at any bayou location. Swamp Leech cannot be evaded, forced. When the Swamp Leech enters a non-bayou location, discard it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, let's put him there. Oh, no. Okay. Then it's our turn. So we really want to get. Oh, I didn't take a horror, did I, for not doing damage last round? So I will take. Another horror, which puts me on three or five, which isn't great. No, in fact, let's put it on Dr. Milan and kill him. I don't really want the horror. I can't deal with it. It does my head in. Literally. So, it's fighty time. So, first action, engage the Rougarou. Spending my clue. Second action, fight the Rougarou. So, I'm going to fight him using my machete. So I'm four, five versus three. Let's make it six versus three and seven versus three. Should give me plus one damage. I'm going to make it eight versus three, so I'm plus five. Plus five. Oh, yes, minus three. Okay, great. So, one damage from that. One damage that because he's the only enemy attack with me, engage with me, so that's two damage. Vicious blow. Three damage. So it's another three damage on Rugi Roo. So he's on six of ten. That gets discarded. They get discarded. Then final action. Attack him again. Let's go four, five. Seven. Eight on three. Eight on three. So I'm plus five again. Minus four. Love it. Right, that's another two damage on him. So he now is eight of ten. That's pretty good, right? I'm burning through cards, but it's kind of what I want to do because I, I, you know, I know this deck's nasty. This, sorry, encounter. Chaos bag is bad, so I just want to make sure I'm passing these tests. Right, then that's the end of the round. The Rougarou will 
After the Rougarou takes one damage per investigator in a single phase, find a location that is furthest from all investigators, move the Rougarou one location at a time. So that is the end of that phase. So before the enemy phase, he'll disengage with me and run away. One, two, So it's dropping clues as he goes. One, two, three. Then, that doesn't happen because I did damage last round. He's not a hunter. So back, so then it is the uh, upkeep phase. Draw a card. Magnifying class, gain a resource, put one doom on the agenda, taking me to five of six. Encounter phase gives me... Ripples on the surface, revelation, test three willpower. For each point you fail by take one horror. Oh no, this could be disastrous. Because I'm three on three with nothing to help me. This could be absolutely disastrous. Three on three. Minus six, ouch, I take three horror and go insane. So I'm on five of five horror. There's nothing I can do to stop that from happening. Roland just died. He went insane from the trauma of it all, which is understandable. We got their Rougarou down to two remaining health. We did pretty well, I think. But unfortunately, we did not lift the curse of the bayou. So let's see what our fate was. If no resolution was reached, each investigator resigned or was defeated, go to resolution one. Somehow you managed to make it back safely before daybreak, resting until late in the afternoon. It isn't until you seek out Lady Esprit the next day that you realise who last night's victim was. With a heavy heart and an unshakable dread, you choose to bury her body instead of contacting the authorities. The less people who delve into this deep, the, the, the who delve this deep into the bio, the better. So if we were playing as part of a campaign, you can play these one-shot scenarios within a campaign. You have to pay a bit of experience to bolt it on in between scenarios. You would then record that the Rougarou continues to haunt the bio. You'd gain the experience um, equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. So if there was any locations, you know, with no uh, with victory points on you, you would record that. But we're not doing this as part of the campaign, we're just doing it for fun. And that was The Curse of the Rougarou. I really enjoy this scenario. It's really thematic. I just love the whole thing about running around New Orleans with chasing a werewolf. I think it's hilarious. Um, difficult to win. Great fun to play. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and hopefully I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye.